Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to another session of One Question a Day. The question that we are going to discuss today is age changes in pulp. And the answer that has to be written for this is the age changes in pulp. It can be classified as that is happening in the primary teeth and permanent teeth because the aging in primary teeth pulp occurs fast and the permanent teeth occurs very slow. And generally, maxillary teeth ages rapidly than the mandibular teeth. So our answer has to encompass all the aspects. So the average length of a primary pulp happens to be about 8.3 years, of which the first year is concerned with the pulp organ growth. Is concerned with pulp organ growth. The first year is about pulp organ growth, wherein the crown and root rim developing happens. Next is about 3.9 years where pulp maturation happens. This is the time between the root completion and root resorption happens. Next is the 3.6 years where there is pulp regression. Time beginning between the time beginning of root resorption till the complete exfoliation happens. So, whereas the secondary pulp, that is about the primary pulp, the secondary pulp is relatively increased in cellular activity, as mitotic rate, vascularity, and neural response compared to the primary length. The average length is about 12.5 years activity. 5.5 years is with relation to crown completion. About 3.6 years is about crown completion to root eruption. And 3.11 years is eruption to root completion. And it survives as to adult stage. So this is the activity of the secondary pulp concerning with the root completion. The regressive changes could be classified broadly into cellular changes, fibrosis, alteration in collagen fibers, vascular changes, then pulp calcification. Going in depth into each of them, the cell changes, the cellularity decreases in terms of number of cells as well as cell size with age. As the age increases, the cellular component decreases. It may be reflective of the decrease in the odontoblastic process because dentin formation persists throughout the life. Decrease in the organelles in each of the cells, the number of the cells and the cell size. So with age, cell changes does occur. Fibrosis. As age advances, there is increase, increase in the fibrous content. The cellularity reduces, whereas the fibers increases. The fibers are mostly collagen fibers, which are arranged longitudinally in radicular pulp and more diffused in coronal pulp. Diffused in coronal pulp. More diffused in coronal pulp. Next, vascular changes. The vascular changes brings about calcification and altered blood flow. And as a result of which, diameter decreases. So, leading to blood flow decreased in aging pulp and this is mostly nearer to the apical foramen. Pulp calcifications. It could be pulp stones or denticles or diffused linear calcification. Pulp stones or nodular calcified masses present in either coronal or radicular pulp whereas linear sands are very common in radicular pulp and deposited near, to, near or parallel to the blood vessels. These denticles or pulp stones are further divided into, classified into two types. True pulp stones are false pulp stones. That is one way of classifying. The true pulp stones will have dentinal tubules like structures, whereas false pulp stones is absent. It is just a mere mass of calcified tissue. Depending upon the pulp stones relation to the dentin, it can be classified as free, attached or embedded. Right, free is when the pulp stones are lying free inside the pulp attached. One surface of the pulp stone is attached to the surface of the dentin, whereas embedded, the full pulp stone is covered more than one surface with the uh, dentin. That is the uh, free attached embedded type. So the rate of pulp calcification in the age of about 10 to 30 years, it is about Two thirds of them have, will have some degree of calcification, about 30 to 50 years, 80 percentage of them have some evidence of calcification, not necessarily pathological. And 
greater than 50 years, there is high chance of having more than one area of pulpal calcification. To go with the pulp stone and denticles, they are nodular calcified masses present either in the coronal or radical, can be true when they are having dentinal tubules. When they are classified as pulp stone, when they, are, they lack the typical arrangement of dentinal tubules and made up of concentric layer of calcified tissue, they are perhaps a nidus or a zone of necrosis is present. The calcification of blood vessels may lead to false pulp stone called as pleboliths. When there is dentinal tubules present in this calcification, they are called as true pulp stones and could be from HCRS cells entrapped in the dental papilla, induce pulp cell to differentiate to odontoblast and that could cause to a true pulp stones. Depending as we said, it rations, it could be free lying in the pulp or attached to one surface, more than one at surface, it is called as embedded. They are hardly visible in x-rays and very close to blood vessels and nerve. With that, we come to an end on the uh, discussion on the pulp stones and the age changes in the pulp. Age changes, primary teeth, permanent teeth, the average length of primary and uh, secondary pulp till formation. Then the age changes, cellular changes, how it decreases. Number of cells, cell size, organelle, odontoplastic process decreases. Fibrosis, as age advances, increase in the fiber content and decrease in the cellular content, how the collagen fibers are laid down. Vascular changes, how calcifications alter the blood flow and pulp calcification. With regards to the dentinal, uh, pulpal stones or denticles, we have seen what are the types, how to classify them, linear calcification and the significance. So, two questions have been covered today. We'll come again or meet again with another day with another question. Till then, stay connected, learn incrementally, stay connected with our channel.